Welcome to What Goes On Tour, Stays On Tour, Until Now. These are a bunch of stories that I've taken from my rugby career with shenanigans and mischief all over the world. And I've had so many friends tell me that I need to put these stories down. So here we go. This is the first podcast from myself, Chris Miles, founder of Developer Player. And what goes on tour stays on tour until now. Now, this has got to be one of my most favorite stories. And uh, the episode is called The Tall Glass. And all become revealed why it's called a tall glass (laughs) through through the story. So let me set you the scene. This goes back to the late 1990s when I was uh, an undergraduate at Cardiff University studying engineering. And it was my absolute privilege to actually be the captain of the rugby union side uh, in in my freshman year. The bunch of boys that I met are still some of my best friends today. And one of the sto- this story is dedicated to one of those fine gentlemen. Now, every year we looked forward to the Six Nations rugby and our trips away on the bus. We'd go to England, we'd go to Ireland, we'd go to France. But by far the funnest times were up to Scotland. And... This one particular time we set off with about 40 of us on a bus uh, playing, drinking games, cards, mischief, stories being told, all sorts of uh, fun and games. And we left and we headed up uh, and one of the games that we used to play on the bus was something called spoof. So to try and explain the rules of it, um, it's played with three coins. You can choose any three coins and you hold them in your hand. You can either put one coin, two coin or three coins in there. And then you've got a bunch of boys around and you put your hands in and you take it in turns to guess how many coins are in the hand. So if there's five of you in the group, there's possibly 15 coins in there. If you choose the right number, you've got to follow by saying, thank you very much. It was my pleasure playing spoof. And then you retire the game with no drinking fines or anything. If you're the last one in, you've got to drink everything that's left in either your can or your bottle or whatever. The golden rule, though, is that if you are out, you can't celebrate. You can't cheer and shout, yeah, I'm out of spoof. You have to stay dignified and uh, retreat respectfully. So this is one of the common games we used to play. And so by the time we left Cardiff on an eight-hour bus journey, uh, before we get even close to being in England, the majority of the boys were uh, were absolutely (laughs) drunk as a skunk. And then they have the next seven, six hours of... uh, of either various stages of sobering up or keep on drinking. And that's how we used to go away on rugby trips, the laughs, the giggles. It's just what rugby touring is all about. When we got to Scotland, though, we got there for the Wales-England, sorry, Wales-Scottish match. And we decided to have a few beers before we go off to Murrayfield, which is the 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 Scottish rugby international ground. And we'd start drinking in various pubs. And one of the boys said, there's this great street in Scotland called the Rose Street. And the Rose Street is about a mile and a half long. And it's got about 50 or 60 pubs into it. And at the end of it is the Rose Street Brewery. So we uh, in experience all the, sc- all the culture that is Scotland. We headed off and we have a few beers down the Rose Street. And drinking and another one and laughing and giggling. And until we got to the Rose Street Brewery. Now, as we sat in there, it was a cold and windy uh, international weekend, and we settled in to this roastery brewery. What's amazing there is that they actually make their own beer in the uh, the upstairs of the pub, and they pipe it down the the walls, uh, sorry, down the pipes into the uh, the optics where they the, where they pull the pull the pints. And they have what they call seventy, eighty, and ninety shilling. Now, seventy shilling is like a lager, quite a nice lager, an IPA. Very fine drinking. The 80 shilling is for those of you who like bitter. That's a good beer, that is. The 90 shilling is somewhere between tar and molasses. It's basically Scotland's attempt at Guinness. And they failed miserably, um, but uh, they persevered and it's still on sale. So uh, if you want some gut rot, try yourself some 90 shilling down the Rose Street Brewery. As the game approached, um, Murrayfield is about a 40-minute walk, drive, skateboard, whatever you want to do to try and get to it. And it's a long, long way to go. And of course, it's away from drinking. 
So myself and five or six other really, really good friends decided that we'll stay. And we gave our tickets to the younger players to go uh, to go and watch the international as we settled in thinking very smug of ourselves that we're going to not get cold, not get wet uh, and stay in and drink. That possibly was our first mistake. The young fellas, off they went to the international and we decided to push on through the 70-80 and yes, we even tried some of that lovely 90 shilling beer. Now, as we got going and we were drinking pint after pint getting up to the game, we said, well, we can't carry on drinking these pints. We've got to try something else. And a friend of mine turned around and said, let's have some, some little shots, something something called Sambuca. Now, those of you who know Sambuca, it's a small little drink um, that is quite lethal. But what's more interesting is you sometimes take it by setting it on fire. Now, what would be better than seven or eight rugby players drinking little shots of alcohol on a fire? What could possibly go wrong? Well, the answer was lots. As we sat there, we started drinking and laughing, and we tied the sambuca. And you, you basically take the sambuca, you set it a light, as in a little shot glass, you set it on light, you cover your hand over it, it puts the flame out, but it sucks and it holds to the bottom of your hand. You then pull your hand off drink the sambuca you cover it back with your hand and then you you suck in the fumes to get a double hit from the beer now this was great the first few sambucas went down absolutely lovely attaching to the hand and then i turn around to my mate and i says what other part of the body do you think we could uh, attach these glasses to <laughs> so first of all we try well what would be a natural progression from your hand your nipple so my friend and I'll introduce to him you to him now he's a, an absolute legend and he will be appearing in many of my stories uh, a great great friend of mine uh, and we'll call him JB it's not his real name but we'll use JB so JB lifted up his shirt and he attached the flaming sambuca to his nipple and I attached it to a mine and we stood there like a couple of hookers from the from the Moulin Rouge with Glasses attached to our nipples with great laughter, a bit of a crowd coming around. And then you pulled it off your nipples, you drink it, you cover it back on your nipples, and then you try and snort some fumes. It was getting pretty messy now, but we were about 15, 16 pints in and about nine or seven, nine or ten shorts as well. So, as this go on, then I convinced JB um, that he could uh, uh, do it on his bicep, which he did. He was, a, he was a big old fella. And he said, Could I do it on my ass? Yes. And yes, I do still have the burn mark today where I attach a flaming sambuca to my ass. But not to be helped done by that, I said, John, can you uh, attach it to your testicles? Now that's a real moment where the sensible people would have said, of course not. But John, jo sorry, JB, uh, to describe him, is a six foot six Neanderthal of a man somewhere between Bigfoot and the Yeti. Um, Chewbacca is also uh, very similar because he is a hairy little fella as well, but he's huge. He's about six foot six, about 19 and a half stone, good strong muscle, he used to play second row for quite a high, high rugby side. So, uh, but not only that, John is gifted with possibly some of the largest testicles known to human beings. I kid you not, his nuts are like a ram in season. He is huge in the testicular uh, department. But he also likes to show them off. So I said, right, let's give it a go. So I ordered a tall glass from the barman. I put three sambucas into them. I swilled it around in the glass. And I brought over a long match and put it in. And it set fire to these sambucas. At that point, JB just looked a little bit apprehensive. Um, maybe second thoughts, but the die was cast and, and onwards we go. As I gave him the glass, he took the glass and he just brought it just underneath his testicles. As he covered his testicles, it created a perfect seal around the top and his testicles went whoom. There they were. 
his balls attached to the bottom of a long glass in the middle of the roastery brew to rupturous of, of applause. Now, however funny that was, it, it didn't prepare you for what happened next. So has he's there attached with his testicles stuck in a glass. I said, well, John, uh, JB, mate, you uh, you still got to get out and you got to drink it. And he, he reached down and he started pulling on his, his old scrotum and, and it just wasn't coming out of the glass. They were wedged into the bottom of this glass. The full seven inches of bollocks were attached down to the bottom of the glass. And he pulled and the more he pulled, the more sweat came from his bow and brow and he pulled and pulled and pulled. And at that, he just stood up. He went a pale, ashen white. And he fainted. <laughs> this six foot, six Neanderthal Wookiee man came crashing down, sending chairs, tables, pints flying. And as he lay there, um, still the glass attached to his bollocks, I did what every mate would do. I just creased up laughing. I just, <laughs> just see him unconscious with a glass attached to his balls. It was um, possibly the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. As he slowly came to, um, I offered assistance, um, at which point he was getting, he was starting to complain. It was getting a little bit warm down in the nether regions. So a couple of mates uh, braced him. As I as doing what a mate did, I, I reached in. With both hands, I grabbed the glass and um, <laughs> I yanked it as hard as I could because he was complaining. And out popped his, uh, his uh, now slightly singed hairy testicles. At which point we laughed, we joked. Uh, he didn't see the funny side because he still had to drink the drink. <laughs> with um, third degree burns around his ball sack because we didn't get the glass off quick enough. Oh. Moral of the story. Uh, don't If you're going to go to Scotland, don't go to the roastery brewery. Certainly do not have the 90 shilling uh, beer. And whatever you do, under no circumstances, order a tall, tall glass um, and a flaming sambuca. Because uh, those scars last a lifetime, but they do make great stories. Thanks very much for listening. Uh, this is a Developer Player, um, and what goes on tour stays on tour. I hope you've enjoyed the story. Uh, look forward to plenty more, uh, and there's lots more to come. Thanks very much. Cheers.